Okay, und damit seid ihr grüßt und die zwei Gnome Hobbits und Edodem zu einem neuen Let's Test. Äh, wir spielen Foolish Mortals Demo-Version. Ähm, irgendwann wieder so ein. Ich glaube, es ist ein Steam Next Test, was es irgendwie äh, öfters gibt. Ähm, Mal wieder so, so eine Demo ähm, hat mir Modi empfohlen. Sah ganz gut aus in den Trailern. Deswegen, ja, ich sag mal, hauen wir rein. Das ist ein kleines Adventure, wenn ich das richtig gesehen habe. Ein gruseligen Halloween-Stil. Gut, das kommt jetzt wahrscheinlich auf YouTube. Dann ist es jetzt ak aktuell gerade Halloween-Zeit, aber es wird wahrscheinlich dann. Irgendwann im Frühling kommen oder im Sommer. Meine Uploads sind immer ein bisschen, ein bisschen in der Wohnzeit war Zeit verzögert. Aber gut, ich würde mal sagen, rein in den Spielspaß. Schauen wir mal, was Foolish Models und so zu bieten hat. In Klinkwood Studios präsentiert. präsentiert. Foolish Mortals. Hm. Ein Kristallkugel. David Younger. Sophie Younger. Verwandt miteinander? Joseph Pontino und einige andere Leute. Tanya, David, Derek und Yvain. Lucas und Julian. Matthew und Patrick. Hathaway. Verwandt mit der Anne. Äh, mit der Anne. Anne. Anne Hathaway. Jeffrey. Janet. Karen. Karen. Spring. Daniel. Contra. Tristoff. Maria. Lisa und Marcel. Wir haben alle mitgemacht. Mad Isaac. Hat die Musik gemacht. Hat er gut gemacht. Bisher. They said there was a treasure on the island. Its location known only by the dead. I could see it in my dreams. How was I supposed to know that in order to find it, I'd have to die too. Spirits and specters from regions unknown, guide to me the wanderer who searches alone. <laughs> well, welcome back, Murphy McCallum. Have you found all five ingredients for the spell? I found three so far. Only two are left, the chalk and the coffin nails. Hurry. The island will lead you to that which you seek. I have no doubt about that. Ah, uh, yeah. The treasure of Belmore Manor. I don't know what happened to it. Bomo Manor. How am I going to find this? Okay. How will the spell Found help me find the lost treasure of Belmore Manor? There are things on this island that have gone unseen. Stories that have been left unheard. <laughs> At least immortals. I commune with regions beyond. Let me introduce you 
to a friend. Ah, uh, yeah. Out of the Clint. shadows, the cursed and the damned return now, my servant, to do my command. Uh -huh. I have returned to you, master. Lower. This gentleman okay. wishes to find the lost treasure of Belmore Manor. Tell him how this can be done. Only inhabitants of the house know where the treasure lies. Their spirits still within its walls, trapped between life and death. To ask them, those spirits must be revealed on the mortal plane. And that is what our spell will do, Murphy. A summoning spell to unveil the ghosts trapped within the house. Five ingredients place inside, tie closed, and then unseal. Within the focus what may hide, this spell will soon reveal. Once you've collected all five, we can summon the ghosts of Belmore Manor. Once we've summoned the ghosts, we can ask them exactly where the treasure was hidden. You have served me, Loa. Be gone! Ah, uh, yeah. Who is the creature that you talk to? That is my Loa. The Loa are the mysteries, the invisibles, the messengers. Is it a ghost? No. They are the intermediaries between humans and the supernatural. There are two planes of existence, Murphy. The mortal plane and the spirit plane. Loas can move between them both. And with my powers, I can control them when they do. That is what we practitioners of the occult are adept at. Dann hoffe ich, dass ihm das nicht auf die Füße fällt. Und die Kontrolle nicht aufhört. Do you know what happened at Belmore Manor? You want to hear a ghost story, Murphy McCallum? I want to know everything I can about that house. Then listen closely. Oh, wow. Dark magic runs throughout Belmore Manor. The house was built by the Belmore brothers, three merchants from England who made their fortune trading across the Caribbean. Xavier Belmore, an explorer, Yardley Belmore, an actor, and Cecil Belmore, a scientist. Their parents dead for many years. They each loved and cared for their young sister, Abigail. Abigail met a young sailor who worked aboard one of her brother's ships. And in less than a year, he proposed. The engagement was a scandal. Despite having the pick of any eligible bachelor in high society, her hand and the Belmore fortune was to go to a commoner. Because of their unconditional love for their younger sister, the Belmore brothers sanctioned the marriage. But people began to wonder if Abigail was being locked into marriage, whether by blackmail or black magic. The grand wedding was planned by the three proud brothers, but in the months leading up to the wedding, each of the brothers, one by one, was lost, presumed dead. And yet the wedding still to go ahead and with Abigail set to inherit the Belmore fortune once she came of age many people began to wonder whether the sailor was not a perpetrator but a pawn on the morning of the wedding the sailor was summoned to her chambers I don't love you Abigail declared I never loved you And to everyone gathered in the house, Abigail declared that that same evening, she would marry another, John Rackham, first officer of the Belmore Trading Company, would be her new groom. Except that didn't happen. 
on the night of the wedding, everyone in the house suddenly and mysteriously vanished. Perhaps the last revenge of the scorned sailor. The house that night held a heart that would be broken, a victim who would be tricked, and a force that would unleash evil. But no one knows exactly who each was. If you want to find the treasure, Murphy, you'll have to find out. Ah, uh, yeah. How am I going to find the spell ingredients? Everything I've ever needed for my voodoo spells, I have found on this island. It's as though this island pulls the supernatural to it. Keep searching. Once that's complete, I will show you the final step of the spell. How did you learn voodoo? I've always been adept with the mystic arts. Just as you dream of treasure, Murphy, I dream of power. I came to Devil's Rock many years ago, drawn by its voodoo energy. And no sooner than I arrived, the spirit world began to reveal itself to me, pleading for me to be its master. I uh, yeah. Why is this island such a focus of voodoo energy? I suspect the answer to that question already lies in what you're seeking. What's this riverboat we're aboard? This is the Spirit Queen. It used to be a pleasure boat. Flying the rivers around the island, a den of drinking and gambling. That's how I came to own the boat, a lucky game of chance. But between you and me, Murphy, it's a lot easier to win when you have spirits to control the roll of the dice. It sounds like you cheated. Fate was always going to bring this boat to me. I just hurried it along. I'm going to finish finding the voodoo ingredients. Hurry back. Ah, uh, yeah. Da müssen wir also die Ingredients finden. Part 1: The Summoning Spell. Ja. Der Stil ist natürlich irgendwie ein bisschen Monkey Island abgemacht. Auf welches Adventure? Inspiriert nicht schon. Inspiriert sich nicht an mein Cannon. A rotatable wooden crane stood at the bow of the riverboat, used to load up cargo in days gone by. Ah uh, ja. Den können wir nicht anfassen. Okay. The wooden shack had a single door. From the moss growing on it, it looked like it hadn't been used for years. Okay, was tun wir jetzt? Und wir an Land kommen. I jiggled the handle, but the door was locked. Okay. Na dann, ich denke mal auf, auf die Insel. Spirit Queen. Gehen wir als nächstes hier hin. Okay. Ein Sargbauer. Ein Grave-Digger. Hallo. Ah, concern it. Don't sneak up on people like that. You frighten the dying daylights out of me. He looked at me like he'd seen a ghost. Sorry, you seem a little jumpy. I thought you were those pesky kids again. Kids don't seem like a reason to be scared. They're little terrors. I'm sure they're gonna give me a heart attack. Last week they showed up with a doctor's note they forged. Saying a man I'd buried that day was just a very deep sleeper. Seven hours I was out here digging him up, at my age! And was he sleeping? Dead as a dodo. Just like those kids will be if I get my hands on. Ah, uh, yeah. My name's Murphy McAllen. I've just arrived on the island. Well, 
Welcome, Mr. Murphy. I'm Edgar Kettle. Grave digger, undertaker, coffin maker, and anything else that needs doing to keep this cemetery running. I'm looking for the treasure of Belmore Manor. Another treasure hunter. Well, let me tell you something, young man. Don't even think about digging up my graveyard. There's no treasure buried here, and I'm already busy enough filling in the holes that are meant to be here. Ah, uh, yeah. Have you ever accidentally buried someone who is still alive? Not that I know of. When you think about it, how would I know? Shouts for help? Desperate shaking of the coffin? Look, I haven't sealed anyone up who was chatting away with me, let's put it that way. I usually check for signs of life, but everyone takes shortcuts sometimes, don't they? <laughs> I deserve some rest in peace, too. Has the cemetery been here long? This cemetery is the whole reason Devil's Rock is populated. Back when the mainland was first settled, they used to ship off the bodies of undesirables to be buried here. The criminals and paupers. St. Juniper's Church up on the hill was one of the first structures here, along with the fort. So that's what this place became. A cemetery island. Ah, yeah. Place where only I'm quite surprised I've yet to dig myself down into one. They say there's one that runs from the church to the crypt just down the path. An old escape route. But I've never been in there. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you know anything about the disappearance at Belmore Manor? I think it's important to leave the dead to rest in peace. But what if they're not in peace? Well, I think there's more to that story than meets the eye. You know the three brothers went missing, right? Well, yeah, we can do this me, I think Abigail Belmore was behind it. She was engaged to a sailor. But nobody like her would go for a commoner. She might have loved him. She could have loved somebody with a big bank account, too. <coughs> I think she must have been using him. Pretending to love him so he'd do her dirty work for her. Bumping off her brothers. And afterwards, she drops him and goes to marry the officer of the company. Fiendish. Those are some pretty serious allegations. Just a feeling, that's all. I don't have any evidence. But when you work with cadavers, you kinda get a sixth sense about things. People killed in mysterious circumstances. Like you can tell when someone's sneaking up behind you. You actually seem to have trouble with that. Wise guy. Uh, yeah. What do you think was behind the disappearance? Well, the sailor must have found out he was being manipulated, mustn't he? Done something to get his revenge. What do you think the sailor did to uh, get his revenge? Nobody knows. But in his contracts to the Caribbean, he could have come across something fiendish. All we know is that everyone in that house disappeared. And to tell you the truth, I'm quite relieved they did. Why's that? Because if they had not disappeared, it would be this old fool who'd have had to bury them. Saved me a good amount of work. Have you got <laughs> any spare coffin nails? No, I don't got any to spare. I have to buy these out of my own pocket. Do you know how much the parish gives me per burial nowadays? A pittance. The roof's leaking, my table's broken, I've used floorboards to build some of the coffins. Take my advice. Don't go into this line of work. I'm telling you, undertaking's a dying business. Ha, huh, good swatch beer. Do you not find working in a graveyard a little eerie? Why would it be eerie? I don't know. Ghosts, maybe? I don't like to think about ghosts. 
Why not? Because they'd be bad for business. I have my work cut out here with the dead as it is. Imagine if they came back asking for a refund. Uh, yeah. What are you working on? This is just a pauper's coffin the parish is funding. Lock him in lumber, leave him to slumber. That's what I call it. No frills. This will end up five feet under by the end of the night. I thought it was supposed to be six feet. You're not the one doing the digging. Five feet means I get a tea break. Uh, no. Why are you out here working so late? The funerals take place in the morning, and I prefer to be tucked up in my bed. I don't like those early funerals. I'm not a morning person. Do you think I could fit inside the coffin? Probably not. The gentleman inside might make it a bit of a squeeze. You mean there's a dead guy inside there? There better be. I can't afford to be burying empty coffins. Creepy. Story of my life. I uh, don't. No. Did the coffin just move? Don't even joke about that. I best be running along. Don't drop dead. I don't want anything else adding to my to-do list. Okay, here comes the home cooking. I didn't need to do anything with the stove, and would have probably burnt my hands if I tried. The tin was empty. Can. Haben wir ein Inventar oder sowas, wo wir nachgucken könnten? Da stand bestimmt aus einem guten Grund dort. A coffin sat upon a rickety looking table, with one leg shorter than the others. I scanned the headstones for anything of note, but didn't know what I was searching for. Hello, Edgar. <lacht> I best be running along. Goodbye. Ich nur zum Hammer bringen. I scanned the headstones for anything of note, but didn't know what I was searching for. I scanned the headstones for. I couldn't see any way to open it. Ah, uh, yeah. Some troopers does church. Okay, as next is da können wir noch nicht hin. Da können wir nicht hin, da können wir hin und hier können wir hin. Dann gehe ich mal hier rüber. Walking into the poor town of Dead Nettle, I could sense its history in every stone, brick and plank. Echoes of merchant ships loading and unloading all manner of cargo from expeditions throughout the Caribbean. Golden treasure that may still lie hidden on the island. Ah, uh, yeah. Can we get in? The door to a jewelry shop with a sign behind the glass reading "Back in five minutes." I tried the door; it was locked. Okay. Am I ready to put the room on? The Puppet Theater. Sit and look at the one Puppet. Rough mumbles emanated from inside the puppet theater. Obviously, preparation for tonight's show was already underway. A homemade paper sign hung on the front of the theater. Hmm. Okay, come on. Oha. There was nothing in the fountain apart from a room of moss. Hallöchen. Good evening. He looked past me like I was invisible, as though if he ignored me hard enough. There was a chance I'd disappear. I said good evening? I suppose, if one's standards are low enough. Have you taken a wrong turn, sir? I'm just having a look around. Well, make it a quick one. Who are you? My name is Felix Greer, maitre d', bartender, and acting manager of the Captain's Club. When Mr. Perkins has his night off. And who, pray tell, are you? Murphy McCallum. I'm looking for the lost treasure of Belmore Manor. 
Oh, goody, another young adventurer seeking fame, fortune, or some combination of the two. Just what Dead Nettle's been lacking for local color. What is this place? This, sir, is the Captain's Club, a private member's club for current and retired sea and riverboat captains. We are highly exclusive. Are you a captain? Uh, yeah. He asked with a smugness that told me he already knew the answer. I thought not. Then may I recommend a swift exit? You'll find a convenient egress approximately 180 degrees to starboard. If, if you like, I can give you a good swift kick in the right direction, sir. And don't feel a need to stop walking until your ankles get soggy. What do you serve here? Captains. Right, yes. I mean by the way of food? The Captain's Club serves a dazzling array of sea source dishes. From our house special jambalaya, to my personal favorite, Devil's Rock Pencoza. Pan seared with lobster slaw and citrus crawfish beer blanc. In all honesty, it's not very popular. Most of the clientele are absolutely sick of seafood by the time they get ashore. Just the sight of it makes them groggy. Uh, what yeah. about drinks? Listen, if you're from the Prohibition Bureau, we've cleared all that up with Officer Mo. Fines were paid, things changed hands, and now we're clear. I'm not from any Prohibition Bureau. Then forget I said anything. The Captain's Club is strictly teetotal in line with federal law. Now, if certain members wish to bring in their own medicinals, then we're happy to provide medicinal aids. Ice, tonic, mixers, and the like. But we serve no alcohol on the premises. I don't. What can you tell me about Dead Nettle? Do you think you've wandered into the local library? Should we gather around for story time? I was just hoping to talk to someone obviously so knowledgeable about the area. Well, yes, unfortunately I'm plagued with an encyclopedic knowledge of the local area. My concierge duties require it. I have a spiel. Welcome, hardy traveler, to our quaint port town of Deadnettle. Once this town you see around you was a hub of commerce, a beacon for ships bravely navigating between America, Europe, and the Caribbean. With the unfortunate dissolution of the Belmore Trading Company, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. our town has settled into a quieter life, perfect for the sailor ready to hang up their cap. We hope that you enjoy your time in our homely town and perhaps explore some of the local sites. With the Captain's Club always here is your home port. Uh, yeah. Why was the Belmore Trading Company dissolved? Well, you're taking me off script, but it really was quite the scandal. The three owners of the company vanished and there was simply nobody left to run the company. Wasn't there anyone who tried? The first officer of the company, Mr. Rackham, looked to step up, but he disappeared too. I do wish the company hadn't collapsed. I bet lots of people share that wish. I might have more customers if it hadn't. What do you know about the lost treasure of Belmore Manor? Do you think you're living in a storybook? Whether maps, talking parrots, X marks the spot? Grow so up, different. silly boy. Captaincy is an accomplished skill which doesn't need belittling by childish tales like lost treasure. What do you know about the Belmore Wedding? You mean the disappearance of the Belmore Wedding. On moonlit nights when the waves crash against the rocks, the captains of this club trade yarns about this very mystery. Did you know Abigail Belmore's fiancé was a sailor who worked on the ships? Some yeah, of the old boys the here even worked with him. They say he loved her, as true as a captain loves the sea. But she was a temptress, a siren who scuttled that sailor's heart. What did she do? After months of engagement, she broke it off and chose to marry an officer of the company instead, on their very wedding day. Who was the man she chose to marry instead? John Rackham, a landlubber who only used the bounties of the sea to fill his coin purse. But the Belmores harnessed his ambitions for the company, his expertise at imports and exports. Why did she do it? What many people don't know is that mysterious things had been found on one of the company voyages to the Caribbean. Mystical things, some say. What did they find? The crew was sworn to secrecy by the Belmore brothers, and all of the men were loyal enough to keep their word. But the rot in the rope was that sister, Abigail. People say that the discovery took hold of her. With the broken heart of the sailor and the resources of the officer, she was about to unleash something terrible. Perhaps it was a good thing that they all disappeared. Do you think that's true? Of course not. It's all nonsense. But the captains do love to outperform each other with such tales on a dull evening. Ja, such an adventure. What makes you think I'm not a captain? Well, for one thing, you lack the grizzle, the crustiness, the essential R of a captain. How do I get those? Years of exposure to salt water and sullen uncooperative crew members, I should think. Tell me, have you ever captained a three-rigger through a tropical typhoon? 
Have you ever run the rapids of the Mississippi without hitting a single reef? Wind in your sails, fire in your furnace, waves beneath your keel? Have you? Well, um, it's more complicated than that. In what way? I get seasick. Uh, yeah. Is there any way to prove I'm a captain? You might show me your captain's license. As I'm sure you know, the state of Louisiana requires all captains, both sea and riverboat, to carry one. But don't try to foist me off with a fake. Last week, we had someone present a license with a photograph distinctly unlike their contemporary appearance. The photograph was clearly of someone a good deal older than them, with more facial hair and, most importantly, one less eye. You know, I must have left my license in my other pants. Certainly, sir. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be able to read it, seeing as I was apparently born yesterday. Das waren Spurs. Man geht nicht zwei. I best be casting off. Don't feel the need to rush back, sir. You can't go up there. It's for members only. Members only. Members only. Okay, ich wollte es nur noch mal versuchen. Dreimal. The poster advertised billiards at the captain's club with captain's three billiard club. balls and two cues framing a cube of billiard chalk. Hier ist ein Angler. Müssen wir mit dem mal reden. Wird es hier vielleicht viel zu geben, zu reden geben. Are the fish fighting? Well, not so well today to tell the truth. They must have been spooked by something. Here. But you should have seen them yesterday. I was having to fight them off the rod. The name's Ned Kipps, by the way. Just Kipps to my friends. I'm Murphy McCallum. Nice to meet you, Mac. What are you doing on this old rock anyway? I haven't seen you around before. Here on vacation? I guess you could say that. Then you got worse judgment than an arm wrestler squaring up to a crack. Hope you don't regret it. Me too. What's that book you're reading? The Louisiana Book of Records. There's this fish called a pinkoza that swims around these parts. Delicious barbecue. And you're looking at the fella that's caught the heaviest pink coza ever weighed at the dead nettle docks. Now I'm looking to see if it's a state record, maybe even national, or a world record. That's some achievement. Oh, it was. Got my photograph on the front page of the newspaper and everything. Ah, uh, yeah. What do you do with the fish you catch? A couple I save for myself, and the rest I sell to the captain's club. They fancy them up with lemon lobster, Slawfish, something or another. Fools. Everyone knows the best way to cook them is to barbecue them. But then again, I haven't eaten in that place my whole life. Why not? I don't have a captain's license, so they won't let me in. Don't you have a fishing boat? Nah, I used to. The Petit Pache. But they don't count it if it doesn't have a crew. What happened to it? That's it across the harbor with this bow sticking out the water. It was the strangest thing. There I was, fishing just out in the bay. When a sea serpent comes out the water, wraps itself around the boat. Well, I was going to be a goner. Jab my fishing pole right in its beady eye, throttled the motor, and managed to make it back to show just as the hull went under. It's lucky I made it out alive. That's a pretty tall tale. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> it was clear that Ned had a penchant for fanciful stories. He told them with such vigor, I think he'd convinced himself they were true. Interessante Geschichten. How do you catch a pink of fish? Oh, it's not for the faint of heart, Murphy. Decades of practice, hours of patience. I tell you this, I doubt you'll ever beat my record. Don't worry, I'm no fisherman. You know, I could write my own book, put my techniques in that, or an autobiography. Sea serpents, cracking, sunken treasure. I just need a snappy title, something exciting, something dangerous, something that uh, get the yeah. book picked up off a shelf. I know, fish and kips, that'll work. Nah, yeah. I'm looking for the lost treasure of Belmore Manor. Well, I've heard a tall tale or two, but even I'm not spending my time looking for that. It's been lost for 30 years now. Lost means it's still ready for finding. I've traveled every waterway on this island, and I haven't even seen a hint of it. It could be at the bottom of the ocean for all I know. And I've found a few treasures in my time. French treasure, British treasure, pirate treasure, but no Belmo treasure. Do you still have those treasures? Well, I had to hide them again. Give someone else a chance to find it. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Ah, uh, yeah. What do you know about the disappearance at Belmore Manor? Now there's a tale to tell. 
You know about Miss Belmore? The bride engaged to the sailor? I heard she was having an affair. Getting up to no good with this fellow called John Rackham. He was one of the Belmore Company's higher ups. Anyway, sailor catches wind of it and tricks Rackham into giving the lady a gift. That's what caused everything to go topsy-turvy. What was the gift? Call me a liar, but there are places in the Caribbean that trade things more elusive than gold. Ungodly things. Is that what you think caused the disappearance? What else could it be? What can you tell me about Miss Belmore? Ah, Abigail. More beautiful than a mermaid, and twice as fishy. Seems like such a nice girl, too. Until the affair. It seems so unlike her. What about the sailor? Don't know much about him. Never met the fella. I never got involved in the dock work, to tell the truth. Always preferred to sit with my fishing pole and fend for myself. We all figured that Abigail being in love with him and everything. He must have been fine folk. I think we were wrong. Poor Rackham, though. He was wronger still. I'm a business guy myself. Get the product, sell the product. Nothing wrong with bringing home the bacon. But he brought back trouble, and he paid the price. I suppose it was a mistake for him to get involved with Abigail. It's risky mixing business and pleasure. Catch you later, Ned. See you around, Matt. Äh, ja. Hier fahren wir ja nicht sehr viel Neues. Da kommt noch lang. Und da kommt noch lang. Und da. The latest newspaper contained a photograph of the fishermen on the docks, with a headline declaring he'd just broken the island's heaviest catch record. Nothing else was of interest. Oh, hello. You! Stop right there! What's your name? Um, Murphy McAllen. I haven't seen you before. What's your business? I'm just visiting. Why do you need to know? Because your business is my business, and my business is news. Uh, I'm Evelyn yeah. Stoker, editor of the Juniper Parish Gazette. No misdeed left unshared, no drama left unmonetized. Come on, work with me here, Murphy. I need something juicy. Committed any crimes? Uncovered any affairs? Any deep, personal secrets to reveal? The honest-to-God truth. No. I need a good story. I can't always let something minor like the truth stand in the way of that. Uh, yeah. Ich weiß nicht, ob ich wirklich mit dir reden will. Yes. Hi. What are you working on? Listen to this. An innocent victim's domesticated canine has been suddenly and mysteriously ripped away from them by fate. Its location and intentions are unknown. Wait, are you talking uh, about a lost dog? Technically, it's not lost anymore. It was found shortly before I got to the house. But still, the story must be written. I have a headline <laughs> suggestion. Lost dog, not lost. I have a personal suggestion. But out. Don't you have more interesting stories to write about? The crackpots this island calls a population wouldn't know something interesting if they paid for it. Which they hardly do. Believe me, I've tried to get juicier stories. Scouring the island, doorstop interviews, hiding beneath windows. You eavesdrop on people through their windows? It's called investigative reporting. Uh, no. I'm okay. I'm doing some research on the treasure of Belmore Manor. Leave it. That's my advice. There's no story in it. No story? Not that anyone would believe. And I've got advertisers breathing down my neck. What's your theory on Belmore Manor? This might sound far-fetched, but I think it was hypnotism. All the puzzle pieces make sense. Who was hypnotized? Abigail, by that strange sailor she was going to marry. This newspaper had been publishing a bunch of stories about spooky goings-on across the island. Uh -huh. We even had tip-offs of black magic inside Belmore Manor. Just it? Who was doing black magic? Well, we weren't told for sure, but it makes sense, doesn't it? The sailor! Why else would someone as powerful as Abigail want to marry a lowly manual worker like him? Come the night of the wedding, and she wised up. Married John Rackham, the company's first officer. Much more on her social standing, and a responsible choice for the company. Uh, yeah. What do you think caused everyone to disappear? The last revenge of the sailor's sorcery. 
But imagine me writing that into a piece of serious journalism. I'd be laughed out of the industry. What's in those filing cabinets? Past issues of the newspaper, starting right back in 1864. Of course, things were a lot more interesting when Deadnuddle was thriving as a port town. Comings and goings of people, ships, and cargo. Lots to report on back then. More than the dregs I have to dress up now. Uh... I think yeah, I better be going. Must, must Keep mark. your eyes out for a story, McAllen. There are secrets on the island, and it's my job to sell advertisements next to them. There was no way I was going to get past the newspaper editor to get it. Besides, I didn't know how to operate it. Gut. Klauen ist eine Schere. Don't even think about touching that machine. Ah, uh, yeah. Dann werde ich mal hier lang. Ah, okay, hier geht's hier lang. Dann mal hier runter. Da waren wir schon. Hier geht's dann im Kreis oder was? Ach so, das führt dann daraus. Interessant. Wenn der Shortcut. Okay, hier waren wir noch nicht. Framed by trees and lit by moonlight, Belmore Manor stood imposingly in the still night air. Even without lights on, it felt like something inside the house was calling me or warning me. Na, dann klopfen wir mal. I scanned the house for a way in, perhaps an unlocked door or window, but my search was without luck. With a deep breath, I took hold of the door handle of the house I'd been thinking about for months and turned it. Unsurprisingly, it was locked. I briefly considered breaking into the house, but unsure of just how true the ghost stories were, decided it was better to not risk angering any spirits that may have been in there. If I was getting in, I was going to need the key. It was the grand front door to Belmore Manor. I wondered mm -hmm. how many people had entered the house this way was and how many never came thing? back out again. I scanned the house for a way in, perhaps an unlocked door or window, but my search was without luck. Uh, yeah, was in the we not I wasn't going to wade into the pond. Na dann. Wo waren wir jetzt ziemlich überall? Wo wir schon hin können. Wir fragen hier noch mal. You return. Have you found all the ingredients and placed them in the gree gree? Not yet, but I'm working on it. I'm going to finish finding the voodoo ingredients. Hurry back. Kann man hier noch mal sagen, was die Ingredients sind? Dann kein Inventar, wir haben kein nix. I took the taxidermied fish from the rotting wooden frame. Ah, ja. Wir öffnen was im Inventar. Aha. Inventar. Ja. Geht nicht. Ich hab keinen Inventar. Gut, dann würde ich mal sagen, so ist das hier gewesen sein. Ich wüsste jetzt auch nicht, wie ich da weiterkommen könnte. Ich 
I scanned the house for a way in. Perhaps an unlocked door or window. You are. But my search was without luck. Not done. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Habt noch einen angenehmen Tag. Ja, man sieht sich bei einem anderen Video wieder. Zum Kanal. Bis dahin. Haut rein. Ciao, ciao.